Hey guys, welcome to another one of my videos. This project is gonna be about me fabricating a trailer that is gonna be towed by a two-wheeler. The purpose of this would be uh, ideally to be used on the farm, transporting produce and other manure from the farm to the home and stuff like that. This project is gonna be in two videos. The first project uh, video will focus on uh, me fabricating the subframe and the actual tow hitch. So we'll be using this modified design that I created using CAD. This is the part where the actual uh, trailer hooks onto the uh, bike. This has a built-in safety where uh, if you don't release a safety lock, you will not be able to get the trailer unhitched or hitched. Usually these are uh, cast steel parts. Since I don't have a foundry yet, I thought I would just fabricate it with the uh, plate steel. So the way I came up with the design is I downloaded a model sample from the GrabCAD website. It had a good representation of the printed hook design, but it was to the actual scale. That is, it was to be mounted on a 20 ton truck or something like that. And what I did was I took the base uh, design from that part and I played around with the geometry and uh, came up with my own design where I downsized the stuff to standard dimensions and uh, made it uh, fabricatable. It is not like I could not buy this uh, pentel hoop from somewhere. Uh, the thing is, it is available in sizes that are very huge and not really suited for our application. So the reason that I designed it is uh, to overcome this issue of being huge and unnecessary, I would say. Once I made the CAD design, I 3D printed the parts. I think I showed you them earlier. And uh, these 3D printed parts were uh, again used as templates to mark and cut the steel plates to size. You know, this is where a CNC plasma cutter would come in handy really, yeah. What will follow is a lot of marking, drilling, grinding and cutting. So if you're not interested in this stuff, then I think you can skip it, skip this part a little bit. So uh, there are a lot of ways to mount a trailer to something that you're drawing with. And uh, this pintle hook is one of these uh, solutions, I would say. And uh, the reason I went ahead with this is it is a really robust design and is it has been around for uh, a hundred years I guess it was designed and built uh, for the Volvo trucks the design is really simple and yet robust and I really like the aesthetic of this hook because uh, I have a Jeep and uh, Jeeps usually have a pintle hook mounted on the rear my drill press really had a hard time drilling this hole because it just has a 0.75 HP motor and uh, in a future video i may be upgrading this uh, drill press with a bigger motor here you can see the hook part taking shape
here I am finishing up the backing plate please forgive the rough cuts on the sides here is everything welded up you can see I have also fabricated the uh, locking arm the next thing would be the subframe that mounts onto the grab handle uh, I found this position to be the most uh, robust for mounting the hook as uh, uh, it is really the only part that is actually attached to the frame of the bike and not uh, overhanging a lot. I decided to fabricate the subframe using steel tubes. These are really thick tubes and uh, since I don't have a bender yet, uh, I decided to use the old cut and bend technique. You just make a series of slots on the pipe you want to bend along the bend uh, length and then you just uh, use some force to bend it. Once you fill up all the gaps with the uh, weld and grind uh, the weld, you will never know whether there was a cut there or it will more or less look like a machine bended part. This was one of the most time consuming parts of this whole build because uh, the geometry or how and where the tow hook mounts uh, I had to come up with by you know experimenting. I only knew the start of the mount point and the end of the mount point and I have to come up with a complex 3D pipe bend to accomplish this. All in all I think it took me two days just for the subframe to be manufactured. Another reason for the time consumed is because uh, I had to redo uh, work I did. Initially I planned to mount the tow hook on the top portion of the bike near the seats. But uh, on initial experimenting and testing I found that uh, it really increased this, the instability of the trailer. So I had to move the mount point as close to the ground as possible. This is because of the momentum that acts from the ground. The lesser it is, the more stable your trailer. The funny thing is, initially I had the moon point close to the ground, but I thought fabricating uh, the subframe would be easier if I had the mounts on the top, and that came and bit me in the ass later. <laughs> Now, this effect doesn't come into play when you're designing a trailer for a stable four-wheeled vehicle and uh, this changes when you are mounting something or towing something using a two-wheeler that is already uh, an unstable vehicle being balanced by someone else. I designed the trailer in such a way that most of the load are on the axles of the trailer rather than on the bike but I found later that you need some load on the actual hitching point for the trailer to be stable and uh, so this mount here this subframe here is uh, designed to take uh, at least 50 kg of load and I feel confident about the strength of this uh, subframe. So here I am finishing up all the tack welds and uh, later I'll be painting it, at least primering it for now. So here I am scrubbing up the surface and uh, I've already grinded off the bells on the bend line. I think all the hard work paid off and I, I really can't find the cut lines anywhere. That is smooth.
So this is the 110cc scooter that is mounted with the frame, subframe. This is what I'll be doing with. And the grab handles are replaced by the subframe. It is strong and sturdy. This is the final look of the trailer subframe. I think the subframe blends well with the design of the scooter. So this is the hitch. You can't really open without removing the safety pin first. And your actual towing hook screen will go on like that and it can't come out unless you already want it to safety pin in and that's all locked in that's not going anywhere that finishes this part of our build and uh, for the trailer build the actual trailer build Please consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.